Tonight, Netflix is streaming money, Facebook ads outside of Facebook, and Pinterest gets personal. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, show eight for January 22nd, 2014. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right to the tech feed. Netflix is on a roll. They just announced their Q4 earnings from last year and reported 2.33 million new U.S. subscribers and 1.74 million new foreign subscribers with revenue up 15% year to year. In a letter to shareholders, Netflix CEO Reed Hastings and CFO David Wells said they're planning a substantial European expansion later this year. They also hinted at three new pricing tiers for new customers, though no specific deals on those new tiers or when they'll start just yet. The company's taking a measured approach to changing up the plan, saying, quote, eventually we'll be able to offer new members a selection of three simple options to fit everyone's taste. So clearly they don't want to upset their current customers like they may have done in the past. Quickster, anyone? Facebook announced via blog post today that it's experimenting with selling ads on other companies' mobile apps. Now, this might sound familiar. Back in 2012, Facebook started a similar mobile ad test, but then abandoned it a few months later. Then last September, the company started testing mobile ads again with third-party ad servers. Now, Facebook says the new project involves ads Facebook will serve directly. Question is, what are the ads be like? Well, app install ads are likely, not just because they're very popular, but because it pushes big Facebook winners think Candy Crush, into other apps everywhere and lets Facebook use its own ad space for big partners like those lucrative TV deals we keep hearing about. We're bound to hear more in Facebook's earning call in one week. Pinterest is experimenting with a new version that selects other people's content based on your interests, and the option is being gradually rolled out to some users this week. It's called Personalized For You, and it's content that algorithmically selects based on your pinning activity. The feature also brings a new interface to the site. It looks a little magazine-like, kind of like the Flipboard News app. For example, categories that you're most interested in are larger than others. Pinterest is also testing the use of animated GIFs on the site. Take that, Tumblr. Coming up, an implantable device that can harvest energy from your organs. But first, we have joining us today, Danny Sullivan, the founding editor over at Marketing Land and SearchEngineLand.com. Hello, Danny. Hello. And thanks for being on the show because I know you were on This Week in Google just a few minutes ago. <laughs> that was a little bit of a warm-up for this. <laughs> oh, absolutely. All right, so the first story, we there was something that you wrote about a couple of days ago where Expedia, as in you know the, the, the hotel reservation booking site listings, kind of plunged in Google. Now, we know that Google penalizes companies for things like unnatural links. We saw that happen with Rap Genius lately. But neither co company is commenting on what happened. So... What do you think happened here? Uh, I think that Google decided that Expedia really was responsible for some of those links and decided to hit them with a penalty. That that seemed to be par for the course on how this goes. Um, for about the only surprising thing to me so far is that Expedia hasn't tried to figure out if there was some like external company that they could blame for it. Well, because yeah, I, I mean, Expedia is pretty established. It's surprising to me that the company would try to get away with something with Google at this point. Uh, it, it is, and the tactics that are being used here are also fairly um, kind of old school spamish in some ways. That you just wouldn't really expect a big brand to be doing this sort of stuff. There's the potential that somebody did it to Expedia, but if that were the case, I'd kind of would have expected Expedia at this point to have said, "No, this wasn't us," and that Google would have stepped up as well. But to get the silence on both accounts, you kind of think, "All right, th there's something going on here." Do you expect uh, a, uh, any sort of official uh, explanation from at least Google's side of it? Since obviously Google would be the company that's that's wielding the power here. Yeah, no, Google tends to not talk about these things directly. Instead, you get these posts that come along that talk more generally. So last year they were unhappy with some advertorials that were happening and some UK newspapers and Interflora got hit. And at the same time, we got a warning like, don't do advertorials. In this case, we saw a lot of links that are showing up in guest blog posts. And coincidentally, Google did a post this week saying, hey, you shouldn't be doing guest blog posts just to try to rank better in SEO. So I think that's the kind of message you're going to get from Google. And really, we just wait to see now and see if Expedia regains its traffic. And another sort of weird link story, a bunch of hotels listed within Google Plus Local had their links that were leading to their official sites hijacked and replaced with ones that led to 
third-party booking services. For example, rooms to book.info showing up rather than Marriott.com's official domain. What happened? We don't really know, um, and, and Google's being very silent. Um, but what happened was you have these hotel listings. A number of them were actually verified, so that means someone had to have requested the listing and, and use an official phone number, an official address for the business to claim it. They had the URLs changed so that instead of taking you to the official Sheraton website or the official Holiday Inn website, you instead were taken to a third-party uh, booking service, which is saying, hey, we had nothing to do with this. We don't know how it happened. Um, um, so we don't know. The silence is fairly disturbing from Google, in my opinion. It's as if there were thousands of listings for people in Google Plus that suddenly found that their profiles were changed not to point to their own personal blogs or their own personal websites, but instead to be pointing to other places. If that had happened to real people, I think you'd expect Google to say, hey, the, this is how it happened, or here are some things you need to do to protect your security, or we're investigating it. In this case, because it's just business listings, they kind of seem to like want to stay mum and not say anything about it. Do you think it has anything to do with uh, any of these local listings being unverified? The unverified ones would be easier, but but some of these were verified, and, and that's the confusing thing. To, to, to crack through the verification, you know, Either you've somehow managed to intercept the phone call or, or, or message that or uh, actual mail postcard thing that got sent to the business or somebody at Google um, internally may have made these sorts of changes. And we, we don't really know what happened with it. But um, the unverified stuff, if it was just unverified things, you'd be more like, OK, well, that could happen. But the unverified stuff makes it very concerning. All right. Well, Oh, Danny, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, you can find all sorts of Danny's opinions on stories like this and others at Search Engine Land and MarketingLand.com. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Finally, your future cyborg implants may not even need batteries. Researchers at several universities in the United States and China are working together on new technology for harvesting energy from internal organs. For example, a pacemaker could draw energy from the heart itself. New technology uses nano ribbons covered by flexible, biocompatible plastic and a tiny little rechargeable battery. When any moving organ flexes the nano ribbons, it generates electricity and charges the battery. Well, with that, that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast at twit.tv slash TN2. Our next newscast is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific. I'm Sarah Lane. Good night. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.